Hello and welcome to Paint with Faith. Paint with Faith is a motivational paint company and we specialize in motivation through the arts. Today I'm going to be painting with you a small tree frog. I like to paint things in my environment because it helps me to connect with the culture that I live in. So before we get started, I want you to help me sing a little Paint With Faith song. Okay, here we go. Repeat after me. I know I can paint what I want to paint. If I don't know the way, I can paint with faith. Okay, one more time. Good job. I think some of y'all wasn't singing with me. Come on, sing, sing with me. Okay, here we go. I know I can paint what I want to paint. If I don't know the way, I can paint with faith. All right, thank you for singing with me. By the way, my name is Ida Mae. So everyone say, hi, Ida Mae. Okay, let's get started. So everyone should have a brush, a paint palette with orange, yellow, blue, white, and green, and black. Okay, I'll give you a second to find your supplies and we'll get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to paint our canvas with a little bit of white paint. And we're going to start at the top with the white paint so that we can moisten up our canvas so that we can start painting in our landscape. The top of our painting is going to feature some yellow because in um, Carolina, where I live, we have beautiful bright sunlights where the sky lights up with bright yellow and bright orange colors. I have my canvas on an easel, but you can lay yours flat on the table. We call this a canvas because we know you can do it. It's not a canvas. Okay. So we're going to paint down to the center of the canvas with yellow paint. While I'm painting with the yellow paint, I'm mixing in the white. This gives me the opportunity to create a nice pale yellow. You know what else is white? Clouds. Yeah, there's clouds are white and gray and pink and yellow. And they reflect all the different colors that you find in a landscape sky. And we're going to continue to mix white and yellow and then yellow and white. Now as I get closer to the bottom, I'm going to add orange. You can mix your orange with your yellow paint. This technique is called ombre. Take the orange all the way down to the bottom. We're going to continue this process and use our white with the orange. What do you get when you mix white and orange together? 
when I mix my white and orange together, it seems like I have like a pale color some people call salmon. Ooh. Or it's kind of like a, I wouldn't say yellow orange, but that is a color, yellow orange. I see a little bit more of a pinkish color than yellow orange. What colors are you making? Okay. I'm ready to paint this frog. Are you ready? So now that we have our background, let's work all of our paint all the way back up to the top. All the way up to the top. All right, that's beautiful. Okay, now this is our second step. We're gonna paint in two big leaves. To paint those leaves, let's start with some green paint. If you don't already have green paint, you can mix it by mixing blue and yellow. Blue and yellow makes green. Take a little bit of green paint and we're going to paint one of our leaves. To paint a leaf, we're going to start with an arc. And we're going to put a line right through that arc. Just like that. Let's fill it in. When you go into nature, there are so many different types of leaves. You could start a leaf collection and draw each and every different type of leaf that you see. Some leaves have smooth edges, some have spiky edges, some leaves look like flowers, some have pokey edges that can stick you and break your skin. For the other side of this leaf, let's mix in a little bit of white for some contrast. Contrast is a word that means light and dark. If you mix white with a color, it creates a tint. So that's what we're going to do. Mix white with a little bit of green to create a tint. And this time, we're going to line up this side of the leaf and we're going to make it a little bit longer on the tip. Give it a nice little sharp shape. This leaf kind of reminds me of the magnolia leaf. Let's add a little bit of our tint to our darker side. We're just going to put a little highlight right there. Looks great. So our frog is going to be sitting on a leaf right here. So let's do our same pattern. Let's start with the line this time. There's the line. And we're going to do the bottom side of the leaf. And we're going to do a nice big leaf so that our frog has something to sit there on. And I'm using a tint of green. A tint means adding just a little bit of white.
All right. So let's do the other side of the leaf. Let's add a little bit more white. So this time your green should be really bright. We're going to let this dry, but while it dries, let's add some more leaves. Let's add a leaf right here and one on the other side. I have some of this bright green in my brush. I don't want it to go to waste. Let's use it. So I'm going to do one arc and a straight line to divide the two halves. You got it. And what are we going to do on the other side? Let's add more white. The two colors should be separated by one shade of green. Colors have an infinite amount of shades because you can just keep adding white or black to create a whole spectrum of colors. And let's add one more leaf on this side. We're going to do an arc and a straight line just like that. Okay, let's do the other side. What do we do? If you said add white, you got it right. Let's add a little bit more white. Now you should have a really bright green. Okay. So now let's draw, let's paint our frog. So I'm going to have my frog sitting right here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint his body body. So if you have some green paint, you can start with that. Okay. So we're going to take some green paint and we're going to paint in a round circle. Sitting on the leaf. Just like that. And we're going to give the frog a little head. A circle is more round and even on all sides. We're going to give his head more of like an oval shape. An oval is a little bit more longer. We're going to give him like a little oval shape for his head. So an oval sitting on a circle. Great job. Okay. Hmm. I think he needs some legs, right? Let's give him some legs. Okay, let's give him a hind leg and a front leg. His other legs are hiding. So we're going to create maybe like an upside down letter V.
You got it. That's the back of his leg. And the front leg, we're going to do something similar. Let's create a highlight or a tinted color. Add a little white to your green so that the arm can sit out a little further than the body. So now I have green mixed with a little bit of white. And this is going to be the front leg. So to do the front leg, you're going to create almost like like the letter L. So you're going to start up here next to where the frog's ear would be. Maybe put a little dot where the ear would be. Can you see my dot? And let's put another dot where his elbow is going to be for this arm. And another dot where the bottom of his foot is going to be. Let's connect the three dots. One, two, three. That's almost like the letter, the, the letter L, but not quite. Not quite. Let's put some of this bright color on the back leg, just so you can see it a little bit better. Remember, tints and shades help your painting to stand out, so you can see it a little bit better. Now, let's go ahead and paint in our froggy's feet. Your brush may be a little bit smaller than my brush. So, this is the brush I'm going to be using to paint in the froggy's feet. So, I'm just going to take my green paint and I'm going to add three toes. I think a frog has five toes, but maybe that's something you can look up for yourself. So you're just going to draw three little toes and you're going to connect each of those little dots to the frog's hand. Or his foot. So that's four, three on the back side and, and one on the front side. That looks anatomically correct. <laughs> sure, why not? Okay, frog. So on the other side of the frog's oval shaped head is a little eye, but let's just put a little bump for that shape of an eye. And we're going to give our frog a little eye. I think that my frog's nose can be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to make my oval shape come out a little bit more. Okay. Okie dokie. So the next thing we'll do is we're going to paint a few stems on our trees while our our frog dries. And we're going to give our frog a little bit of personality. Okie dokie. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a stem for... my leaves with my green paint. 
a little stem. If you like paint mixing, you can mix your green paint with a little bit of white to create a nice tint of green. Or you could use the green straight out the tube. It's up to you. This is your own artistic expression. So now we're going to create a long stem that connects to this base stem. Just like that. We're going to create a flower right there. Let's create a short stem. This will be a little budding flower. Let's replicate this shape on the bottom for symmetry. Long stem that connects to this leaf and this leaf. And what's missing here? Did you say a short stem? You're right. All right. So one of the, sh the short stem is going to take a U shape, almost like the letter E. It's a little bud. Just like that. If you missed that, don't worry. I'm going to make another one up here on the short stem. So it's just a U shape. And so now we have a place, space to put a flower and a bud and a flower and a little flowering bud. If you have one paintbrush, now is a good time to clean out your brush. We're going to be using white paint. And so you want to start with a nice clean brush. I'll give you time to get that done. Okay, let's get started with our white paint. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take some white paint on our brush. And we're going to make some nice bright bulbs. Let's trace the inside of our little shapes that we made. It should make the letter W. W is for paint with faith. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so let's make a little you sh a little ball there on the top, and let's fill that in, just like that. Okie dokie. There we go. So now we should have two little bulbs. Let's paint in our flowers. So this flower is going to be just like a traditional daisy. we're going to do five to six petals. And I'm using a circular pattern for my petals, but flowers are very unique. So whatever type of flower that you enjoy painting, that is quite 
All right. There are so many different types of flowers in nature, especially white budding flowers. So we're just going to put a little flower there. And let's do one more at the top. Alright, so now you have two beautiful white flowers, oh, almost two budding ones, and two flowering ones. Alright, the inside of your flower, you can put like a little daisy, a dollar of a daisy, that's a sour cream commercial jingle so the inside of your flower can be orange so let's dip our paintbrush into our orange paint you can use yellow too orange or yellow you decide and then you can put a nice circle on the inside of there There you go. You're doing so great today. Let's paint our frog's eye. The first thing we're going to do to paint the eye is to paint a white dot. Actually, we're going to paint a black dot. So, take your paintbrush and you're going to create a black dot on the frog's eye. Don't use that much paint because we want it to dry so that we can do more stuff to the eye. So just, uh. So, if you, did, if you did not like the eye, I know that using that color can be very intimidating. If your canvas is dry, mine is a little wet still, but if your frog is dry, you could take a wet napkin and um, slowly remove it. If you decide to remove your eye, then make sure that you refresh your green paint and then put your black paint. So I'll give everybody a second to get the eye that they like, okay? And once you get that little black dot there, go ahead and rinse out your brush. While we're waiting on our friends, we're going to give the frog some personality okay so you can use yellow or you can use white I'm gonna use white but you can use yellow and we're gonna give the frog some daisy pattern around his eye so not touching the black part we're gonna do two little dots opposite of each other one on the top and one on the bottom like 12 o'clock and six o'clock. Um, so now we're gonna do one at nine o'clock and three o'clock. Or you can say east and west. So north and south and east and west. There's four little white dots. And you can use um, yellow if you like. 
we're going to do that again, filling in the opposite spaces. Okay. And then you're going to put one little white dot on our froggy's eye. Your black paint might be a little bit wet. So, a lot of bit wet. So just put a nice generous dot on there. And we're going to wait till it dries. <laughs> Okay, now let's give our flowers some personality. So we're going to take our brush and we're going to repeat this pattern that's in the frog's eye on the flowers. So let's go north, south west and east and let's repeat it on the other side all right what type of flowers in nature have black patterns I think pansies sometimes have black patterns. Poppies, the poppy flower. So north, south, west, east, and then we're gonna add in a few more dots in between. All right. So the last thing we're going to do is we're just going to go back over our leaves to make sure that we have the contrast we want. I noticed that on one of my leaves, it could be a little bit darker. So I'm going to go back and make this side of my leaf a little bit greener. I kind of want it to match the color or look similar to the color of my frog. I like that a lot better. So I have the two tone of my leaf. The bottom jaw of the frog is here. Let's add the frog in a big white bottom jaw. To do this, the first thing we need to do is rinse our brush. Keeping color in your brush when you're using white could result in other colors like light green, gray, or even brown. So the first thing I'm going to do to add the jaw is trace the outside of the frog's bottom well, the chin area. Without trace it with my brush, I'm going to go out and add almost like a little circle. If you need a little bit more white for a little bit brighter contrast, go ahead and add the white now. And 
and we're also going to go right under the frog to give it a nice belly. We're tickling the frog's belly. Tickle, tickle, tickle. I don't think our frog is ticklish. <laughs> And remember, we're going to keep the contrast going with our frog by making sure that whenever we have a dark color, a light color, we add a dark color right next to it. So I'm going to extend the leaf under the frog just a little bit so that Mr. Frog can kind of stand out or Mrs. Frog. Okie dokie. <laughs> My frog looked like he just had some dinner for real. I see that belly belly. Okay. Well, I hope that you all enjoyed painting this frog with me today. There are lots of more opportunities that you can have with this particular painting. You can add more flowers. You can add another frog, maybe a tinier frog up in the trees. And you can even write your name on the bottom. Not all artists sign their artwork, but it's a good opportunity for you to learn how to, you know, um, share your artwork with your friends and start a collection of your own paintings. So, here at Paint With Faith, we believe you can do all things, and I knew you could do it. You just needed a little bit of faith, and so thank you for painting with me today. Have a great day. Bye-bye.